What's up, what's up, what's up, what's up? I just wanted to go over something real quick. Um, this is not going to be a very long one at all. It's really not even necessarily a bathroom preaching. It's um, just an expression of my heart and might be totally irrelevant for most of you. But it's something that's really been bothering me a lot. Um, there are so many uh, translations of the Word of God, and especially in this country. In America, we have so many translations and it's just ridiculous sometimes when I think about how many translations we have. Like, like, you know, the thing is, is you can read a piece by uh, Shakespeare or some great historic, historical piece and, and we admire and, 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 you know, and cherish that piece for the, his, the, the historic value it has and for the language that it has. But whenever we talk about the Bible, man, it's like we always have to, we have to make it more relevant to the time, to the days and to the age and, and these and thou's and begats and stuff is, it's uncomprehensible and we can't understand it. And, and it just gets ridiculous. It gets ridiculous because the Bible is one of the only things that we do that with. You don't do that with any of the other writings of history. You don't do that with the day. We haven't rewritten the Declaration of Independence. I mean, all of these things. So that's just my rant on that. Um, but I want to say something really quick. Like this Bible here is uh, it's Cambridge Cameo. It's actually my favorite Bible out of all the Bibles I own. And it's a King James Bible. And I am not a King James only person. Um, if over here on my side here, I have an Amplified. I have, uh, what else do I have over there? I have a Holman Christian Standard. I have an NASB. I have a new King James over there. Um, primarily though, most of my Bibles are King James. I was raised on the King James Bible. I learned most of my scriptures. You know, our Father who shall in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory. I mean, I just, that wording of that old school language to me is just, it's precious. Now, I will call that a personal preference. But I wanted to do this video for a specific reason. Uh, like a lot of translations, I'm just going to give two examples, two really quick examples. Uh, I'm back in the Gospels for a little while now. Um, the Lord just really led me to go back to the Gospels. And I noticed something in, in Matthew 18, verse 11. It says, Jesus, these are the words of Christ. And he says, for the Son of Man has come to save that which was lost. Now, when I get into the whole textual debate about, you know, the... The Texas Receptus, the Received Text, the Codus Vaticanus, Codus Sinaiticus, and all that stuff, and why they are right, why this is wrong, why this is older manuscripts, and all that stuff. Just think about that verse, though. For the Son of Man has come to seek and save that which is lost. And then if you go into, like, Matthew uh, verse 19, where the, you know, the Pharisees are coming to him, trying to tempt him with, with lawful issues over divorce. And in 19 verse 9, Jesus says, And I say unto you, Whosoever shall put away his wife, except it be for fornication, and shall marry another, committeth adultery. And whosoever, and, and whoso, marrieth her who is put away, doth commit adultery. Now, a lot of translations will either, a lot of other translations will either bracket that, and then they'll say, This is omitted because such and such manuscripts don't have an older manuscript, more reliable, whatever, and they'll just take that out. Or if they don't bracket it, like I said, they'll, they'll put like a letter and then there'll be a little thing at the bottom and they'll put the verse down at the bottom. So here's my reason for doing this video. Like I said, I am not a King James only. So I do read other translations. Sometimes I like the wording and the verbiage and stuff like that. My primary source though, my personal trustworthy source is always going to be the King James. Now, the debate about translations for me, when you have verses like that, when you have verses that are something to, I mean, when you have a verse that says, for the son of man has come to save that which was lost. And you say that that's not supposed to be in the Bible because these manuscripts don't include it. So my prayer is, Heavenly Father, I don't care about the debate man has over your word. But if this is in accordance with your will, if it's in accordance with your heart, if it is inspired by you, then I want those words in my Bible. You know, and, and the fact of, you know, you have something like, you know, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, and to take something like that out, and you say, well, it wasn't omitted, it, the King James Bible added it. Look, dude, I don't care if it was omitted or added, you know, and the whole people will get to the Revelations thing, don't take away from the word, don't add to the word. Really, do you know the heart of God? Because my thing is, is the Holy Spirit convicts us unto righteousness. No one comes to Jesus unless the Father draws him. And no one comes to the Father except through Christ. So if we understand that basic premise, 
you know, read what translation you want. My only caution would be, don't put yourself in such a box that's so small that you stay stuck and don't allow yourself to go back to this old school King James once in a while to look at it. You know, it don't take long for you to read through before you realize, you know, but for as much as he had not to pay um, for as much. If you really use and articulate and use grammatical uh, basic principles, it's really not that difficult to understand. It's really not. If you don't, if you don't have enough time to look up a word, then why are you even following God? If his word is something that, you know, God, I just need gravy. I just need milk. But you don't want to take the time to cut up a piece of steak and chew on it? Then you're going to be a baby for the rest of your life. So challenge yourself, man. Once in a while, I, and you know, and the whole thing is, is I, I have people who, will dog this King James Bible, but they'll praise the NIV Bible. Whereas, or, or NASB, or a New King James, or a Holman Christian Standard, or the Christian Standard Bible, or the ESV. And my thing is, I can read this word, this King James, and I can bust open my Holman, or I can bust open the New King James, and there's something particular. I was reading this, and, and, when, and this one's supposed to be this long, but I'm gonna point this out. When Jesus was walking on the water and the disciples saw him and they were afraid and, and he says, don't be afraid, it's I. And he tells, and Peter sees him and says, Lord, if it's you, command me to, or bid me to invite me or ask, command me, whatever, to come to, come to you. And Jesus' response says, come. And the Bible says that Peter steps out of the boat and he begins to walk towards Jesus. But then he looks and he notices that the wind and the waves were, were, were boisterous and tumultuous and violent and, and everything. And, and he begins to sink and Jesus, the Bible says, immediately grabs him, pulls him out, pulls him up. And then he says, oh, you have little faith. Wherefore didst thou doubt? Wherefore didst thou doubt? Now, the translations won't say, wherefore didst thou doubt? They will say, why did you doubt? Now, you can look at it and say, well, it kind of means the same thing. I guess it kind of does. But when you look up the word in the Greek, wherefore, uh, it comes from a word that sounds more like ice and when you look at it, it has to do with Jesus being specific. Where was the point? Where was the exact point that you began to lose your faith? And what was that point that drew you away from being able to do the impossible? So instead of just saying, why did you doubt? No, no, let's go back and let's find the place where your faith was broken, where your focus was broken. Will your concentration on the, the call that you just had come where that was deviated? Where was that place, Peter? And you know, my thing is in our lives, if we just want to look at things and simplify everything like we do the Bible anymore and just go to, well, why do you feel that way? And we don't want to get to the root of the issue. Then we allow that root to stay in there. And if you don't, here's the thing. If you just go in and you just spray water in the tub, with a little bit of mildew and you make the tub nice and shiny, but you don't deal with the mildew issue or the mold issue. It just continues to grow. Now you might've suppressed it for a little while, but it will continue to grow. And the thing that I was seeing in that scripture that I just mentioned when uh, Jesus was talking to Peter, when Peter sank was little particulars like that, you know, like for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Uh, it, don't allow yourself to be so caught up in trying to make everything easy that you lose the opportunity to challenge yourself to grow. That's all I'm saying. I love you. God bless you. Peace, peace.